this is row number four putting these down and I gotta say that a, uh, a morning like this with the sun shining and the birds chirping my hands in the dirt it doesn't get much better this is this is a real pleasure this is this is really a joy to be out here experiencing you know planting my own food soaking up that warm sunshine in the morning spring is here for real in texas i know some of you are still in the cold and i hope that uh you guys get over that pretty fast so you can get out too but i just wanted to share the sensation the feeling of just being out here to enjoy the nature the sounds and the the warmth of the sun the the cool rich soil on your hands June bugs in the garden. <laughs> Feed them to the chickens. Okay, one last row, and then we'll have our potatoes planted. I guess I had 27 potatoes because I have six left, and I already did a row of six, but that's okay. We're going to put six in this last row. Okay, now that all the potatoes are in the ground, and this ground is level, so probably what I'll do this year, with potatoes you are supposed to, when they start growing up, hill them up just a little bit. This protects the potatoes that might be uh, growing and exposing themselves to light. That covers them up and keeps uh, the potatoes good because you don't want them to be um, exposed to light because they turn green and they can get a little bit of toxic. So, and it also encourages a stronger root system. So on this bed, what I'll probably do, instead of hilling them up, is I'll just make another box that's the same dimensions as this box, and I'll put it on top, and I'll put more soil in it. That would be like a double stack garden bed. One that I can just take off later in the year when I can harvest it. Now I have a challenge in my garden uh, some of you already know that I have cats and the cats I really like them being in the garden because I have had rats in the garden and the cats seem to have taken care of that. I, I haven't seen any evidence of rats in the garden for a long time and that's a good thing but a bed like this this is just a big litter box so I need to find a way to keep them uh, discourage them from being in here and using this as a litter box Somebody was throwing these away at some point and I thought I might do a little edging somewhere. I don't know if I'll ever do that, but what I thought for now, until these potatoes start sprouting, is I can just lay these across the surface. And that should be enough to discourage the cats from wanting to use this as a litter box because they can't scratch down into that soft soil. When the potatoes start sprouting, I'll have to figure another plan. But for now, right now, today, this should do it. Now that my potatoes are done, I just want to give you a quick shot in the greenhouse and show you some of the progress on the tomatoes. They have all been transplanted and they're growing beautifully. So let's go in there and take a look. Now the greenhouse is still messy. I haven't cleaned it up yet, but take a look at some of these tomatoes. I mean, I got, I got some over here in these larger square pots, the smaller square pots, and the little fabric pots. You know, some of these are, are just really growing up beautifully. And over here in the, um, the cone containers here, so those should be ready to start putting into the garden here in the next few weeks and I'll be excited to show you that. Just wanted to give you that quick little update after the potatoes. Thanks again Mindy for sending me those potatoes. I really enjoy uh, red potatoes and I appreciate that so much. So I look forward to seeing those grow and harvesting those later in the year. Uh, Mindy, by the way, also sent me some um, heritage uh, long neck squash 
Kershaw squash, I believe she called them, and it was a variety that her grandpa had planted for a long time, and uh, now she's saving seeds from them. So I'll be excited to grow those later this year. Hopefully I can get a few to endure past the vine borers. So until next time, I'll talk to you soon.